because if there's no yes, then there's no consent. I mean, those things don't just disappear. Everything's now out there and it's permanent. I feel like everybody should consider themselves a feminist. If you're doing something right, then that person notices and you feel just you like you're glowing. Okay, it's not okay. Did you guys hear about social media? <laughs> <laughs> so often now I'm on social media and I just feel like everybody is just so beautiful and perfect and you're really stressed out. Is there like an online life in high school and like an offline life in high school? A lot of us portray something different online because everyone can see us online. People who don't see us in real life see us online. So you become two different people almost. You know, you were mentioning like uh, people looking perfect, right? It's, I find that it's a lot of uh, people mixing up their self-esteem with their self-image. If you aren't really, really comfortable with who you are uh, and you don't realize that none of that stuff really matters in the long run, um, then it can get really uh, tough to deal with and kind of messes with your head. It's really easy to like fall into these things like you can very easily sexualize yourself, you can like project these things that are like really nice but then they like also get other people attracted to something that's really not you. On Instagram I I get insecure like how you are, like I'll see Kylie Jenner and I'm like, oh my god, goals. Of course you're gonna feel insecure, so yeah. you're gonna want to make yourself like 10 times cooler on social media. No one wants to be like portrayed as a fake person when they're online, but I think just having that barrier of like a phone screen, you know, it gives you that much more confidence to, you know, be cooler or be more approachable or be more hip. But I don't necessarily believe it, it could be a bad thing, it just may be, you know, like, human nature. At some point in our life, depending on what we are, if we're entrepreneurs, inventors, uh, etc., we probably will want to have open profiles. We'll probably have LinkedIn accounts and stuff like that where people will have access to all that because it will benefit us. But right now, I think at our stage in our life, we don't, we don't have a reason. It's better for us to be private because of our self-consciousness as well. The place makes so many mistakes when you're a teenager. Oh, like, yeah. You're going to post like a terrible photo and that will come and bite you in the butt, you know, mm -hmm. in the future. I so. still make those mistakes now. <laughs> <laughs> Can you check your likes a lot and does it become a barometer of how popular you are, where you fit in the social circle? I think that people take it that way, but it's not necessarily like a conscious decision for someone to like a pro like a picture. It takes less than a second. I mean, you can be scrolling down a feed and just like a picture, and it's nothing. It doesn't mean that this person thinks you're popular, or they think you're better than someone else, but I think we take it, okay, someone has 67, someone has three, well, they're more popular. There's certain times of the day that we've already like recognized as higher flow for people on their phone, like seven or eight when everyone's trying to do their homework and they're on their phones, close it then. My question is something that I recently learned about only because I saw my friend doing it. I was like, you look different. Selfie surgery apps, as they're called, I guess. Um, like, but these apps that can like help you, I guess, change your features in whatever way you want to change them. Eye colors, hair colors, slim down. Do you guys use these apps? I. I've never used the apps. Honestly, I don't, be I, honest. Be I've honest. I never. I never. I I've uh -huh. filtered like a photo on Snapchat, like just changed like the color or something. <laughs> but like I've never used these apps. But I think it's important to note that the development of these apps, like the fact that these apps are popular, says something about how our society, like what our society feels. And yo, that's so sad. Yeah. yeah, I got that app, um, sorry, okay. uh, Perfect 365 yes. or something like that. Oh yeah. my god. So I, I got it originally just because I thought, oh, like you can like see what makeup looks like on you and just like just do kind of some fun editings on friends and everything. But then when you start seeing like, wow, if you take away this blemish, if you give yourself like a different eye color and yeah. stuff, how much better you look. And that was really like kind of a wake-up call that I should stay away from that. Because now you always used to know that if you're going to look at a magazine, yeah, you're going to know they're photoshopped. Okay, yeah. write them off. That's unachievable. But now that you see people posting, people that you know posting these beautiful pictures with perfect skin and everything, you're thinking, wow, why can't I do that? And I think that really creates a negative self-image. I used to, like, back grade 9 and 10, I used to edit my photos. I used to do that whole, like, yeah, under the eyes, like a little, like, contour of the cheek. But, like... <laughs> As my as the years gone by and as more like the more I experience things and the more I grow like in confidence and stuff, I find myself not doing that and I used to like compare these two, like maybe my friend would post something of me and like literally looks like how exactly how I am and that's like how I should be displayed because like Previously, I was chasing an ideal image. I generally think that they can be used in a positive way. Say you really like a picture, but you know, there's that one pimple like on your cheek that you just want to take away. That app can do it for you, so it it works both ways. But I definitely think that it it ruins your confidence a lot more than boosts 
You can go out with your friends and someone will go out into the night. They prepare themselves to know that they're going to be put on these social media later, potentially like through photographs or something. And like, even when they're out with their friends, they will take moments out of being in the moment with their friends to like record something that's happening, either make a Snapchat mm -hmm. video or write a sentence about this status, like at the mall, you know, <laughs> like wherever they are. And then it cooks and then they have to leave their phone for a bit yeah. and they let it, they wait and like they're, you know, like checking on it again and again, just to no. see like, so and then even oh, so accurate. a week later, you're still checking it again. Cause you're like, Oh, I wonder like if it's grown, you know, like you're just kind of like, you're, it's like, you never actually get out of it. And then the idea yeah. is too, is when you're taking a selfie, God, sometimes it takes forever. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. how long yeah. does it take to take a selfie? Like be honest. I remember, like 20 I remember minutes. 20 minutes. Oh. 20 minutes of, and then you have to find and a caption. And then you have to say and, and, yeah. to do it like different ways. And then all of a sudden you see people bringing in like Facetune, you're like, oh my God, now, now they got a Facetune, you miss your bus. <laughs> yeah. No, I know it's, uh, eventually you're gonna be walking out into the world. And you're like, this is how I look. You know, and you have to kind of own that. So sad that we have to wrap up, but this is such an interesting topic. We can talk for hours. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you very Thank much. You Thank, Thank you, so much. you guys. Hey guys, join the convo by commenting below. And if you have some questions or need some help and advice on the subject, hit up my pals at Kids Help Phone and make sure to follow our social at the dot TV for tools and resources on the subject. Oh, one more thing. Hit subscribe on this title card.